Good day, everybody. Uh, it really is a great pleasure for me to be here today representing ICGB at the uh, China Medical Expo for this year. Uh, I'm just really very sorry uh, that I'm not there in person, and I really hope that the situation will improve uh, over the coming months, and I'll be able to be present personally at China Medical City in Taizhou uh, in, as soon as possible. So thank you again for the invitation. And what I'd like to do today is tell you a little bit about the ICGB and what we have been doing for international collaboration and cooperation and technology transfer and how our vision of how the newly established China Regional Research Center can fit into these activities. So ICGB, as you know, is an international organization. We have 66 member countries and we have research institutes located in Trieste, in New Delhi, and in Cape Town. And these have now recently been joined by the Regional Research Center at CMC in Taizhou in China. Now, ICGB, uh, the mandate is to provide a, a center for of excellence and research for training in molecular biology and biotechnology specifically addressing the needs of our member countries. And like, I like to think of us of doing science for development. Now we're run by our countries. These are our board of governors and we have representatives for China from CNCBD who attend our governance meetings each year and help direct the organization for the coming years. We also have a council of scientific advisors I'm also very pleased to say that we also have China strongly represented on this, on this council with Professor Li Jin being one of the current members. And again, our CSA review the scientific activities of the organization and make representation and suggestions to the Board of Governors. I like to think ICGB's activities are perfectly in line with the Sustainable Development Goals and I think we have a 360 degree approach to this. What I will do today is say a little bit about some of the instruments of action that ICGB has for fulfilling its mandate and how they meet the, uh, the, the, the goals of the SDGs. So first of all, there's the science, which we do in the laboratories. And this is done in direct collaboration with scientists from our member states. It's not done in isolation. And this fits perfectly with SDG 17. Science is based around partnerships and collaboration. And you can get a feel for this from our publications, where you look at the author list and you see we have scientists from all over the world working in ICGB laboratories and publishing together. And indeed, we host scientists from more than 40 different countries within the ICGB labs. Of course, what we do for people and what we do for SDGs is absolutely fundamental and good health and well-being is central to ICGB's activities and in particular, our work on infectious and non-communicable disease is absolutely world-class. We have very strong programs in parasitic diseases, specifically those associated with developing countries. Virology uh, is a linchpin of ICGB's activities and of course, during the current COVID-19 pandemic, we have been extremely active in this regard. But we mustn't forget non-communicable diseases. These represent some of the major scourges of humanity worldwide. And ICGB is very active in areas related to cardiovascular research, gene therapy, uh, cancer research, as well as neurobiology. If we have a healthy population, we must have a well-fed population. And so zero hunger is fundamental. And so ICGB also has a very strong program related to plant and industrial biotechnology. Um, most of those activities are based in, uh, in New Delhi, but we also have very strong programs in Trieste and Cape Town, all collaborati collaborating together to various forms of crop improvement uh, and uh, development of biofertilizers and biopesticides. So obviously through the science, we can then provide excellent opportunities for education and training through a variety of uh, fellowships, 
for both PhD students and postdocs. And this lies perfectly in line with SDG4, provision of quality education. And we have a whole range of different fellowship programs, uh, one of which we're very excited about is the In China Fellowship Program, which unfortunately has uh, been delayed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But we're really very excited by the fact that we will be having fellows taking up uh, postdoctoral positions within China over the coming year. And we're also very hopeful that some of these will also be able to be hosted at the Regional Research Center at China Medical City. Currently, we have well over 200 fellows on board working within ICGB, and as you can see, uh, they come from all over the world. Um, and this is a really very active and vibrant program. We also prov provide uh, short-term mobility through fellowships between ICGB member countries. And as you can see here, again, this is an extremely effective program with lots of exchange throughout the world and uh, with China uh, heavily involved in many of these exchange visits. And again, this is something that I would like to see more of and to see more of it within the Regional Research Center at uh, China Medical City. Now, in line with this, one of the things that we realized um, is that many fellows from least developed countries have problems accessing ICGB's training, uh, training opportunities. And this is a new program that we've developed. Uh, it meets uh, several SDGs in that it's on topics related to health, agriculture, uh, education, of course, and it's part of a big partnership with the uh, UN Technology Bank for these developed countries and the World Academy of Sciences. And this is to promote fellowships within ICGB laboratories, but also within, the, uh, within other partners within the ICGB network. And of course, within this, we also include the Regional Research Centre. So we really hope that some of these fellows will be able to take up their fellowships within, uh, within China at CMC. We're also, as part of this uh, programme, we're running uh, workshops on regulatory aspects uh, related to biotechnology uh, and, and within regulatory science training. And this covers a whole variety of areas, as you can see at the bottom here, de detailing risk analysis, uh, containment regulations, uh, biosafety regulations and GMO food safety, as well as a whole variety of other areas. And again, if any of you are interested in any of these courses, uh, please do not hesitate to contact me. Now, obviously, Gender equality is an absolutely central part of what we do, and ICGB is 100% committed to reducing inequalities and ensuring gender equality in what we do. And for this reason, uh, through very generous support from the Italian Ministry for Foreign Affairs, uh, we are now launching a postdoc fellowship for women scientists in Africa uh, to ensure that they have access to the state-of-the-art facilities both within the ICGB laboratories in Trieste, New Delhi and Cape Town, but also within the RRC in China. And so again, we really look forward to hearing, uh, to seeing some of these applications uh, to come towards our Chinese laboratories. And again, likewise, we have this fellowship program uh, with the UN office on South-South cooperation, again, empowering women to carry out research within the ICGB family of laboratories. And again, these are specifically intended to promote um, exchange uh, between countries of the South. And so these can be hosted from any, uh, any country around the world that is classed as, a, as, as being part of the global South and take up these fellowships in New Delhi, Cape Town and Taiju. Obviously, Biotechnology development is absolutely fundamental and one of the main goals of ICGB is to ensure that the technologies that we develop actually get transferred to industry and make it to the populations that are in need. And we do this through our technology transfer unit and we have a whole variety of different products that are available for transfer to companies 
to subsequently market within their own countries. I should stress that ICGB is really very keen to work closely with companies in China so they get access to these products and then can subsequently take them to market within China. We have done multiple transfers of these products all over the world, as you can see from this slide, and many of those products are now at the marketplace. And what we really hope from our collaboration with China and with China Medical City is that companies present within CMC will want to take up some of these technologies with, of course, ICGB support throughout. I come back to partnerships. Partnerships are absolutely fundamental in uh, achieving what we all wish to obtain, and that is to ensure that science is available for all and that the products of science can improve the lot of the global population. And this is a partnership that we've recently established with New England Biolabs and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for helping laboratories in lower middle income countries help establish diagnostics for COVID-19. And this was a project uh, set up for Africa uh, involving ICGB labs in Trieste and Cape Town, and then laboratories in Nigeria, Ethiopia, and Cameroon using a novel diagnostic for COVID-19 as a supplement to regular PCR diagnostic. And this turned out to be incredibly effective. Uh, it's easily comparable to the regular PCR diagnostic tests. Uh, and this is now, this technology is now being rolled out in the four original target countries. Uh, and we're aiming to obtain WHO emergency use authorization. And we're also expanding the network to have five further ICB member countries in Africa, in Angola, Senegal, Zimbabwe, Rwanda, and Cote d'Ivoire. And one of the future elements of this collaborative pro program is that ICGB will be assisting in the development and also the analysis of new diagnostics in low resource settings. And finally, we want to establish this network of nine countries for organizing major international meetings in Africa, specifically in Cape Town, uh, on, on ways forward for, meet, for meeting future uh, pandemics and pandemic responses. And of course, ICGB ha now has the first regional research center that is located in China. This is a wonderful partnership with China Medical City and CNCBD. And we opened uh, last year in January of this year. And this was one of the first visits that we had to the centre uh, with colleagues from the uh, Council of Scientists for the Regional Research Centre. And we had a signing ceremony uh, last January um, in, uh, in 2020, indeed, uh, for establishment of the RRC. And then, of course, last year, which I'm sure all of you remember, uh, we had the official opening at the China Medical Expo uh, last September. And now uh, we're fully operational. We have a director, Professor Yili Yang. Um, he began his research activities there in January of this year. And we already had the first publications by June of this year. Recruitment of PIs and fellows is now in full progress. And we have the first international ICGB Regional Research Centre meeting scheduled for early next year. And we have now obviously obtained many active collaborations between ICGB, the RRC, and companies at China Medical City for establishing collaborations for the transfer of novel technologies and specifically those related to the production of biosimilars. So we're extremely enthusiastic about how this is developing and we look forward to an expansion of our interactions over the coming year. And so with that, I will stop. And just to reiterate, ICGB is using science for global development. And I'll leave with this you with this slide. Um, this is my email. If any of you have any questions at any time, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much indeed, and I wish you all a wonderful conference.